Have you ever been tempted or gone through some type of spiritual or biblical testing? What tools did you use to come out of it on top? In this lesson entitled Single-Minded Obedience, I'm going to show you how to overcome temptations, what tools to use biblically when you're being tempted, and what really does the devil want us to do to and for him. And I'm going to show you all of this through the example of how Jesus handled it. There are notes for this lesson. Click the link in the description below and it will send you to where you can download the notes or I'll leave a description link above my head. So just click that. It'll take you to where your notes are. Get your notes, get your Bibles, and get your Sunday school books. For the standard lesson of the Sunday school is now in session. Join me. Let's go. Hello, welcome to another edition of the Sunday School Lesson that's taught by Pastor Rodney Jones. I'm the pastor of the New Nation Anointed Ministries Church of God in Christ, 1700 West 87th Street in the city of Chicago, Illinois. Welcome to you new subscribers and thank you for taking the time to subscribe to this channel. For those of you who would like to be notified weekly as we upload these lessons, make sure you click the subscribe button below and you'll find a bell symbol beside it. That way you will be notified each week through your email. Bing! He just uploaded another lesson. Today we're dealing with single-minded obedience. Matthew, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 11. This date is February the 2nd, 2020, and this is the standard Sunday school lesson. I am preparing to leave by the time you see this lesson Sunday night. February the 2nd, 9 o'clock, I will be flying to Phoenix, Arizona. My wife and I, we will be going to the Tommy Barnett Annual Dream Conference. So for those of you who will be in Phoenix, Arizona, hit your brother up and get your cameras ready so we can take us some selfies and have some fun. And I ask and solicit that you would pray for us as we make our journey there. We'll be going for a whole week. Then we will be flying back home Friday. In this lesson, I'm going to show you, number one, that sin is actually in three or one of three categories or in one of three points. Number two, I'm going to show you that Jesus was tempted in all three points, yet without sin. Then I'm going to show you that Jesus used scripture for each temptation that he was confronted with. But Jesus knew, number four, which scripture to use when he was confronted with each temptation. And then Jesus not only just quoted scripture, but he stood upon the principles, the basics, and the basis on the foundation of the scriptures that he quoted. I'm going to show you all of those. And then not only I'm going to show you, and I want you to look at something, look at the tactics that the devil used in this lesson and look how he addressed Jesus. He's a very wise tactic man. He's a, he's a spirit that he's, he's a cunning He's, he's tricky, and you got to be very careful when he approaches you as the tempter. Three things I want to show you here. Number one, notice what he says. If you're the son of God, use your powers to prove it. Number two, he says, then, if you're the son of God, jump and see if God protects you, if he's a God of his word. Then number three, he drops the if you're the son of God. He just simply says, if you worship me, I will give you all this glory and all of this power, and basically that's really what the devil or the tempter or Satan wants us as believers and everybody else to do. He wants us to worship him. So in this lesson, Jesus told us, he teaches us the tools to use to overcome temptations, and those tools in this lesson 
uh, standing on the foundation, the principles, and the promises of the scriptures. But you got to know them in order to stand on them. Let's start reading. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. He saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, Cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and show them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. This is the entire reading of our lesson. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word for the edification of our souls and the people of God said, Amen. Very unique, very interesting lesson. We got to learn some things from Jesus on how he handled temptations. Temptations are always, we are always going to be confronted with temptations, trials, persecutions, testings, or whatever. Understand something. There are one of three ways or one of three individuals or people, circumstances, or situations that we will be tempted. Number one, God tempts us, but when God tempts us, he does not lure us to sin. God tempts us by testing our character, testing our faith, and testing our commitment. Number two, that rascal is Satan himself. When he tests you, he lures you to sin. He lures you into breaking the commandment and the code of God. And number three, the Bible says every man is tempted of his own lust when he is drawn away. So there are times when God is not taking us to a test. The devil is not trying to lure us. There are times when it's just our own selfish thoughts, plans, and own selfish desires that brings us into some of these temptations and it causes death. So the scripture in the lesson says, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now this is an interesting story because number one, Jesus didn't go on his own to be tempted of the devil. Number two, the, the, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into this wilderness to be tempted or to be tested. Now, God didn't tempt Jesus. The tempter in this lesson tempted Jesus. Now, about this time, according to Luke 3 and 23, Jesus would be about 30 years old because he's getting ready to enter into really the bulk of his ministry. And what he's getting ready to enter into, he has to be of or, or about 30 years of age. That's Luke 3 and 23. And then Jesus just recently got baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. And you'll find that in Mark, the first chapter, verses 9 through 11. And then when he came up, the Bible says that a voice came from heaven, the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove and lighted upon him. And this voice says that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And that's Luke 3 and 22. Now Jesus leaves the Jordan River full of the Holy Ghost. That's Luke 4 and 1. That's very important, very interesting. He enters into his ministry full of the Holy Ghost. And so then the Spirit drove, the Bible says, Mark 1 and 12, that the Spirit drove him immediately into the wilderness 
to be tempted. And so the Spirit led him up from the valley of the Jordan up to a higher plane so that he can go through these series of tests. So the devil, uh, he heard the testimony of God when God said that this is my beloved son. So at the temptation of Jesus, what he does is he approaches him from that angle. We're going to talk about this. And what I love about it is Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as I live by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now the Bible said that he was led. And the word led means to bring or to lead. To bring, to lead, to carry, or even to take up. And so the Holy Spirit literally led him into this wilderness so that he can be tempted. Now here the word tempted means to be tried, to prove either in a good or a bad sense, to tempt or to test by soliciting the sin. Now watch this. In order to ascertain the character, the views, or the feelings of someone, or to be put to test, to be put to a test. Now remember this, according to James 1 and 13, God never tempts us to do evil, neither can we tempt God with evil. So if it's a temptation to sin, it is not God, it is the devil, or it is our, our own lust. But, or however, he uses circumstances to test a person's character. So he don't text, temp, tempt us or lure us to sin, but he can and will use that circumstance to put us to a test. Yet he will never test us nor lure us to sin. Here, and it's interesting because he starts off calling him the devil, then he ends up calling him the tempter, or he calls him both. Later, he's called Satan. Hmm. The devil, in this lesson, is one who falsely accuses and divides people without any reason. He is an accuser. He's a slanderer. So the devil was looking for a reason to accuse Jesus to God, and he's a false accuser of the brethren. So the devil always lures us to sin, and then he accuses us to God. And why should we listen to somebody who's only trying to trick us? Hmm. Verse 2. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. So Jesus, according to Luke 4 and 2, fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And Scripture lets us know that he did not eat anything. Now, I didn't read whether or not he drank anything, but it did say specifically that he did not eat anything. Then it says, after he fasted, he was hungry, Luke 4 and, 20, uh, and 2. Now, Jesus' 40 days wilderness testing, it goes along, or it even coincides with the children of Israel who was in the wilderness for 40 years. They also were in the wilderness being tested by God. That's Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter. As a matter of fact, in this lesson, Jesus even quotes from Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter, and we're going to get into that. So another one subject matter in here would be the subject matter of fasting, which means to abstain from eating. There's different types of fasting, but what happens is fasting breaks down the physical man while the spiritual man is growing. And fasting uh, is, was a mean of focusing on God's will through prayer and not the will of man. And the Bible says that he was hungry, which means to be famished or even to crave. And that's an interesting thing because now the tempter is getting ready to come on the scene and make his move. And we'll talk about that. Verse three. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. If thou be the son of God, notice the tempter. First, he's called the devil. Now he is actually called the tempter because this is what he is doing now. Later, he will be the, sl not just the slanderer, but he will be an offense to the Lord Jesus. And I'll tell you what that word is in a minute. So the tempter comes to him and the first thing he puts on the floor is his position in God. Now, when you look at something, Scripture didn't say that the tempter came after, but it says when he came. So it didn't really say that he came after Jesus was hungry. It, it kind of looks like it here, but that's not what he was saying. Because Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days, 
Mark 1 and 13, Luke 4 and 2. He was in the wilderness being tempted 40 days as well, Luke 4 and 2. And the Bible also lets us know that wasn't nothing else in the wilderness but the wild beasts. That's Mark 1 and 13. So this tempter was unique. He came up with a strategy, with a unique tactic. And he comes from an angle of human need, and that's hunger. That's food. And he comes at a time when we are vulnerable because at this time we will be starving, we will be hungry, or we will be drained, or we would be fasting. And then he would come at that angle. But how I many you know the Bible said we are not uh, ignorant to his devices? We know exactly what he's trying to do. And so actually, uh, uh, James 1 and 2 says, Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. But he says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So it is not a sin to be confronted with temptation. It's a sin to yield to temptation. It's not a sin to be confronted with temptation, but it is a sin to yield. So we should also know and expect the tempter to use different tactics during this temptation. First thing he says to him is if. If you are the son of God, I need you to know this word if is not the word of doubt. He's not trying to bring doubt to Jesus because he understands Jesus knows 100% who he is. The tempter knows 100% who he is as well. So what he does is he brings it from a different angle. Since he was there to see and to witness the baptism of Jesus, I'm sure he heard when God said, this is my son. What the tempter does, he comes from another angle. He says, all right, since you are the son of God, this is what I want you to do. Not if, as in doubt, but since. Since. This is a conditional since or a conditional if. Since you're the son of God, I want you to do this. When you look at it, he says, the son of God. By its position in the sentence, son is emphatic. So what he's really saying is, if thou standest to God in relation of son, command these stones that they be made bread. If you are standing in relation to God as son, you are the son of God, then go ahead and prove your point. So the temple, he already heard that Jesus was the beloved son. He wants Jesus to prove that he is the son of God. And the tempter wants Jesus to use his own power to feed himself. And Jesus does have the power to do it, but he is not going to do it because that's not why he came here on earth. Not to prove his power, but to prove his love and, and his devotion to God. Verse number four it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Mm. I love this because Jesus, number one, did not yield to temptation. Uh, he, and, and, and keep in mind that temptations come to try our faith, to try our character. That's James 1 and 2. He didn't yield to the temptation, but Jesus' answer to the temptation is the word of God. It is written. This is the tool that we as believers need to use when we are confronted with any and every temptation that is the word of God. I spoke on yesterday and I talked about in the book of Romans, the fifth chapter, how tribulation is a tool of God for the life of the believer because tribulation worketh patience. And the word work means to bring about, to exercise, to accomplish a task, to bring out a reason. And so the reason believers and that word tribulation, it, or, uh, it literally means to squeeze, to press, to compress. And the reason that believers go through tribulation so that we can be squeezed and pressed into the image of his dear son. Y'all about to make me preach again. I'm going to keep on moving. So he is showing us the need to use scripture to stand on the promises of Jesus or the promises of God in every given situation. Number two, he is showing us that we need to use the proper scripture for the proper temptation. But one must know scripture in order to use scripture. 
So food is not really what sustains us, but what sustains us is the word of God. He says, thou shall live and not die and declare. It's what he really said. So, but Jesus quotes from Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter and the second verse. Children of Israel was tested by God in the wilderness and God proved to them that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God even fed them manna from above. He gave them quail. He gave them water out of rocks just to prove to them that man does not live by food or bread alone, but man lives out of the commandment of the mouth of God. Then he says, it is written. Now look at this. It is written. It's what we call in the perfect tense. In other words, Jesus was saying it is written and it stands written. It is still written and it stands as still being written. So the answer that Jesus gave to the tempter is the scripture. And number two, the answer that he gave was the proper scripture for the proper temptation. Very good to know. Number five, then the devil taketh him up to the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. Number one, I need to know that, need to let you know that Jesus was not led by the devil. Remember, he was not led by the devil. He is still being led by the Holy Spirit. So Jesus has passed the first test while the tempter failed at fulfilling his assignment given by himself. Now, we're going to go into something. King James uses the term take it, which actually means that Jesus either went with or by the side of, because the word take it here does not mean that the devil took Jesus by the hand and brought him up there. No, remember the devil and is against Jesus. And everything that he does is to tempt Jesus, to try Jesus, to cause Jesus to fail. And Jesus will not allow him to take him by the hand. You'll find it, for instance, I believe it is in Matthew 17 and 1, Mark 9 and 2, and Luke 9 and 28, when Jesus took the disciples with him to the Mount of Transfiguration or wherever he went, he took them with him, which means they, they either followed him, they went by his side, they met him there, or something like that, all right? So King James used the word taketh, and the word taketh means with or by the side of, it implies taking a loan with someone or taking someone along with you. And keep in mind the purpose of him going here was so that he can continue to be tested and tempted. So the tempter has Jesus on a pinnacle of the temple. And understand something, this pinnacle or this temple is the place that houses the spirit of God. So he takes Jesus, if I can use this term, he takes him to church and places him on a pinnacle. Now that word pinnacle does not mean the top bleak like we have on top of our churches. It means a wing. And most likely he took him to the highest wing of the temple. And that holy city, according to Luke 4 and 9, would be called uh, the city of Jerusalem. And so the word uh, temple, it, it signifies the, the whole compass of the sacred enclosure. He didn't take them into the Holy of Holies. He took them up to the highest point of there. And there were different wings in the tabernacle. So there's some more stuff on the notes. I won't read them right now. Verse 6 says, And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Uh, once again, he calls him or says to him, if you're the son of God, then I got something else I want you to do since you refuse to do the other one. So the tempter failed at the first test. Now he tries another tactic. Understand the tactic he used because Jesus used scripture and the first temptation, now the tempter is going to bring scripture in and try to use scripture. Problem is, he gives a misquote 
or he leaves some minute important details of Psalms 91 verses 11 and 12 out. And it's very key, the thing that he leaves out. So uh, there is a tricky thing that every believer should know that when anybody approaches you with misquotation of the scripture, when you go try to live that missing part, then you find out you're missing a main ingredient in your scripture. It's just like leaving out the cake uh, in a cake mix. <laughs> you got the flour, the sugar, the <laughs> and all that other stuff, but you missed, you missed the cornmeal in the cornbread. You ain't got nothing. You got sugar cake. <laughs> So the tempter, he misuses the scripture that's given. Now he cites, he cites a passage of scripture in Psalm 91, verses 11 and verses 12, which gives a promise to the believers. Now he wants Jesus once again to prove his sonship of God the Father. He wants Jesus to test God by jumping down. If Jesus jumps, he will prove that he does not trust the word of God. Understand something. Too often we put God to the test because we don't trust his word. No, honey, no sugar plum. If God said it, you're supposed to believe it. It's a done deal. Not always putting God to the test because when you put God to a test, you're telling God, I don't believe you. I need to see you physically do it with my eye. But the passage of scripture that he quoted, the words that he missed says to keep thee in all thy ways. And what I believe he did was he left that part out intentionally because God will keep us if we fall, if we are, he'll keep us as long as we're going in all of his ways. So when he take that part out, he misses that. He just got us thinking, oh, oh, I can do anything and God is going to keep me. So he, he lost out to keep the in all thy ways. And the devil knows scripture. You don't believe it? Look at 2 Corinthians 11, 14 and 15. Now I'll read Psalm 91, 11 and 12. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So he literally wanted Jesus to put God to the test by jumping. Verse 7. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. I love that word again, which is the word that we may overlook. Cannot overlook this word because what Jesus is doing, he is finishing. He has given us a fuller understanding of the 91st Psalm, which the tempter missed a very vital, important part. Jesus uses the word again when he says it is written again. This word again means furthermore or on the other hand. So Jesus brings into the situation Deuteronomy the sixth chapter and the 16th verse and he connects it to the misquotation that the tempter brought in which is Psalms 91, 11 and 12. In other words, God will order his angels to catch us if we fall, but don't jump to tempt God. So he says, you shall not tempt the Lord your God as you did in Massa. That's Deuteronomy 6 and 16. So the word again means on the other hand or furthermore. This means a statement is added at this point in an argument. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. Jesus said to him, On the other hand, it is written also, you should not tempt or test thoroughly or try exceedingly the Lord your God. And here the word test means to put to the test. The word tempt means to put to the test. And so what happened was Jesus used Deuteronomy as a connection to Psalms because the enemy came and misquoted and messed up this whole thing. So Jesus was making a connection to what the enemy did. So Israel tempted God in Exodus 17th chapter verses two and verses seven, when they said, I don't know if God is with us or not. 
And that is a temptation, especially when God told him that he was with him. Verse number eight. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. So Satan failed, Lucifer, or the devil, I should say, he failed this test also. So now he takes Jesus up into an exceeding high mountain and then he shows him all of the kingdoms of the world and he shows them him the glory of everything or the glory of even having them. So this really speaks of what the devil really wants Jesus to do at this time because he's getting ready to tell him what I really want you to do. And from this mountain, he could possibly view many kingdoms throughout the land where they were. So Jesus is also shown all the glory or the splendor that goes with being the king over all of these kingdoms. But I'm here to let you know that pretty soon he himself is going to be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So the Bible says that the devil showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. That's Luke, the fourth chapter and the fifth verse. Now let's see what happens and let's see what the devil tells him after he says unto him or after he shows them all of this verse 9 and said unto him all these things will i give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me that's what the devil really wants us to do this is his ultimate goal he wants to be worshiped because he wants to be like god god wants to worship he wants us to worship him. John 4, verses 20 up to verses 24. Jesus lets us know that the Father seeketh such that will worship him. Then he also said that God is spirit, or God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Because the devil is a counterfeit. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, but the devil walks around as a lion. <laughs> He wants power. He wants people to worship him. He doesn't want us to know and define God. But look at what else is interesting. The devil promised to give Jesus all this power. And he promised to give him all the glory if he worshiped him. The devil even said in Luke 4 and 6, he says, For that is delivered unto me, and to whosoever I will, I give it. Now, he told Jesus in Luke's gospel that all of this was given to me and I have the authority and the right to give it to whoever I want to give it to. But I'm here to let you know God had already promised Jesus that if you do what I tell you to do on earth, all of this is yours. And that's why Jesus came down to do the will of his father. But then Jesus also said in John 12 and 31 that the devil was the prince of the world. He knew that. He was the prince of the world. Verse 10, final verse. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So Jesus passed the last test. And he says, Satan, get behind me. Now, he goes from calling him the devil, or he goes from being the devil at the earlier part. Now he's Satan. And Satan is the adversary. That's somebody who always wants to get in your way, who does not want us to fulfill the work of God. That's why you got to be careful who you share your dreams with, including pastors. There are other fellow pastors you cannot share your assignment or your dream to or with because they will start dictating to you and start getting in your way. And then they will become what we call an adversary. Because now they're trying to block the plans of God in your life. You just got to be careful. So he understands that his will is to do the will of his father. But Satan wants to block him from doing that. And Jesus once again stands firm on the scriptures. It is written. Now, he possibly quoted from Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter and the 13th verse. And I love how he's, Jesus states, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, to serve is to worship God. And you'll find that in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. 
I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The word service means worship. In other words, when we live a life conducive to the will of God, that's worship. Worship is not always in church on your knees. When you serve God, that's how we worship God, when we are obedient to his word and to himself. Besides, Jesus already knew, according to John 8, 44, Jesus already said that the devil is a liar anyhow. And so the word serve means to serve in a religious sense or to worship God. Verse 11 is the last verse. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Since the devil now lost the battle, he tried in all three points of temptation or all three points of sin, because the Bible said he was tempted like as we are uh, in all points, yet without sin. I'm going to show you what I call the three points of sin or even the three points of temptation. I'm going to show you that in a minute. So number one, Jesus has finished his hour of temptation. Number two, the devil departed Jesus for a season. That's Luke 4 and 13, which means he wasn't through. He was coming back. But the angels came and they ministered to him. So the Bible lets us know that he was tempted on all points, like, like as we, yet without sin. That's Hebrews, the fourth chapter and the 15th verse. But what I also like about it, it said that since he was tempted like we were, he is able to succor, which means to come to the aid, to help, to assist. He is able to succor those who are tempted, Hebrews 2 and 18. And I'm going to show you what I believe is I said all sin falls in three categories and technically so does all temptation. You find that in 1 John, the second chapter and the 16th verse, he says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. I believe that every sin that we deal with is in one of those categories. Every temptation that we're confronted with is in one of those categories. I also believe that's why scripture lets us know of these three main major temptations that Jesus was confronted with. And yet it said that he was tempted in all, notice it said all points. He didn't say all sin, but he said all points. And then when you get to 1 John 2 and 16, he lets us know point me. Point number one is the lust of the flesh. Point number two is the lust of the eyes. And point number three would be the pride of life. And he says, it's not of the Father, but is of the world. And that's it. I enjoyed this lesson. I want to thank all of you all for viewing this lesson. If you like these lessons, just leave a thumbs up just to let me know that you like these lessons. Make sure you download your notes for this lesson as well. And leave some comments below. I would like to hear from you what parts that you like about this lesson or even what did you learn out of this lesson through this particular channel or bring some knowledge. I, I, I'm always open for discussion on all of my lessons on the channels that I have. I love dialogue. I love talking back. And believe me, as soon as I get here from you, I try as soon as possible to uh, answer your request or to chat with you or to even say thank you because I appreciate the fact that you take the time to view this channel and to comment. Leave a thumbs up if you like the lesson. Leave some brief comments. Please hit the subscribe button and even hit the share button to this channel. Continue to pray for me and let me know if I'm going to see you all. Even if you write it down below, let me know if I'm going to see you uh, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona Sunday night through uh, the while I'm getting down that Sunday night. So keep me in your prayers. Remember my motto, teaching the word of God in the spirit of excellence. And the model of the Sunday school, a child saved is a soul saved, plus a life. Amen. Amen.